Thanks for tuning in. Yes, once again, the Double RT Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A, number 14, the Double RT Boxing Show, folks. Episode number 14, the Ready Ready Talk Boxing Show. We're going to go over some prospects, pay-per-view buys, and the 8th. And if we can squeeze in there, perhaps... uh, It's about getting that time, folks. Who's the fighter of the year? Who is the fighter of the year? I fell off in the beginning of the year. I had a... I don't know if you guys remember, for those who have been watching it, remember we had it going on, the knockout of the year, round of the year. I I just got got caught up in work. I was starting to... I fell a little behind on the show, and I missed all that shit, man. But yeah, man, we we had it for the good... The first... Quarter, no, I forgot the good first five months of the year. Remember, we had knockout round of the year, uh, fight of the year, fighter. The man, we had it going, man. We had it going. Season three is coming up, and we will be on point. The double RT box, and we're gonna hand out those awards at least to ourselves, right? You know, now thanks for tuning in, new viewers. Please become a new subscriber. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up while you're at it. You're in the midst of a good old hour show of boxing talk, the Double RT Boxing Show with your host, Mr. A. It will be your show. I'm just a host. Like I said, we're talking about three prospects, talking about pay-per-view buys, and let's get into the prospects. It's disappointing. Disappointing. Now, we're talking about... Three heavyweight prospects, all with um, potential, I guess, if they're prospect, they well, let's just say this, blue chip, good prospects, not just, you know, heavyweights, Philip Hovovich, Daniel Dubois, and Nathan Gorman. All got fights coming up this month. Hovovich is on the 8th. Dubois is on the 15th. And Gorman is is on the 22nd. Now, each on the day of a boxing fight, a, a decent fight. On the 8th, you got, um, it's a lot happening on the 8th that uh, Philip is fighting, but he's not part of any of what's happening. He's in his own little world. But on the 8th, there's a lot. And we're, like I said, we're going to go talk, we're going to talk about what's happening on the 8th, but probably the fight of the weekend is probably that sale Lomachenko taking on Jose Pedraza. That's probably the fight of the weekend. You know, you got you got Lomachenko on TV, but after that, besides that, you got Filipovich fighting on the eighth. He's going against Kevin Johnson. On the fifteenth, you got Daniel Dubois. Taking on Razvan Kanjo, the dude who just does not come to fight. Joey Parker, fucking Luis Ortiz. And then on the 22nd, you got Nathan Gorman taking on the, I think it's Leia Patai. I think that, I don't know too much about him besides his little fight with Vladimir uh, Klitschko, getting called a punk by Brand. Um, um, champ, you know, Shig, well, I should have Shigs, Brand, I don't know, I forgot his name right now. Let's go, champ. Um, but I know that's not the same fighter. You know, I seen thing. I know he, he I seen little things. He, he slow. If these three prospects, this is like. They, two of them, Philip Hovich and Daniel Dubois. We just seen Daniel Dubois fight Kevin Johnson. Kevin Johnson winning in there to, I guess his purpose was to say, hey, hey Kevin Johnson, can you learn how to take out a survival, survivalist? You know, because what other learning process was there? For that fight. Oh, he got rounds. He got endurance. Th- that, what Danny du- Dubois got that night, he should already have. But I guess, I guess boxing and the, and the big lights are different. Adrenaline, you know, get different thing, different uh, focus on actually getting hit this time, not just sparring hit. You know, I guess all that takes a different path. But even 
what were, you know, Kevin Johnson, we just didn't see nothing learned from Kevin Johnson fight. And that Kevin Johnson is fighting Philip Hovich, who Philip Hovich is, we saw what he did to Mansoor. He beat Mansoor down. What, what is he possibly, like? he needs to knock Kevin Johnson out. That's what he needs to do because there's nothing he can learn from fighting Kevin Johnson. You know, we saw that Danny Dubois maybe ain't quite ready. Maybe why he's not taking that Nathan Gorman fight. If he couldn't really crack Kevin Johnson when he had him on the ropes numerous times to be cracked, to be hit, and to be cracked, and to be knocked down and knocked out. You know, he didn't want to take the chance. He didn't want to take the fire. He didn't want to take the risk. If Philip Hovich could one knock Kevin Johnson out in the center of the ring, that'd be impressive, you know. Because Kevin Johnson, we're pretty much know in his last fights, he's taking himself against the ropes, you know, doing his little turtle shell, surviving, throwing one little puncher. He's gone. I on it's like I don't want to see Kevin Johnson get hurt, but. You know, to me, it, it, it sucks to say this because you're like, hey, dude, that's the homeboy's job. Let him keep getting his paycheck. Let him keep working. You know, I think this would just down. <laughs> I'm watching football here. Football Americano, American football. And a guy just like gave himself a safety, Tennessee Titans. He ran out of the end zone, then back in the end zone. Gave himself, gave it to Tennessee. Wow. Okay. Back to boxing. Philip Hovavich needs to knock out Kevin. It's like, dude, I don't want him to get him to do his job. But sooner or some point, the commissioners got to stop Kevin Johnson, you know? It's like, I don't want to like say it's a, it's a touchy uh, situation, touchy topic. And I'm going off point a little bit from the prospects. But Kevin Johnson, we're, we've seen the Italian dude recently die. Now this Adonis Stevenson, you know the age hitting. You never know. As, as Stevenson looked fine. You know, yeah, he looked gassed out in Battle Jack. He okay. He was looking good in the fight. He started to get gassed out, but we know we never thought this was going to happen to Adonis from that fight. Now, Kevin Johnson is just sitting on ropes, letting people punch him. He's slipping them, not slipping them. But who's to say this night is the night he's not going to slip shit and get cracked? And he's, he's what, 39 years old, 38, 39. And he's he's going in there with young prospect killers to be that test, to be that one. One of these prospects is going to knock the shit out of him. And they're going to have that young man strength like Vosdick on, on fucking Adonis. Also, and this young man's probably going to come up. Could be Philip. Could be Philip Hovich. You know, the dude has reach. I think he's, even though he lost, so, well, I'm not going to say I think who he did lost, but him and Joe Joyce, they hit hard as fuck. You know, I don't know who made a better pro adaption. I know that's a different thing, but Joe Joyce just fought. So he's a nice little young heavyweight, but these three are like prospect young heavyweights. I don't know how old Hover it is, but you guys get it. Fucking w- one Philip to win to get Kevin Johnson out. And I'm just I'm t- like I get it. The, de- the the sport needs experience rounds like that for the young prospects. I get that part. You know you you don't want to take away from the business. But then you like that every sport evolves. And like football did all this stuff with the football helmets, the quarterback safety rules, uh, basketball, the hand checking, the defense, you know, I, uh, bas- b- 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 boxing, b- boxing, get the fuck on, get it out, get it out. You know, I'm watching all this shit right now. Boxing is a brutal man combat sport well not a man uh, a hand combat sport sorry for that you know you when you women you, bow, you get the punch mr a right there for that one soft if you're a professional soft if you're a female professional you know on the shoulder um fucking now 
if I almost forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, it is a a hand combat sport. Now you don't want to ruin what it is, take away its sweet science beauty. You know, you can't how can you soften it up? How can you protect it? You got the referee uh, to stop fights. You got uh, Jack Reese, perfect example of protecting a fighter, doing boxing. He gave the 10 count, you know, and some, um, you know, they, they wave it off to, to prevent the fighter. But in instances, you know, a rule was kind of bent and not bent, but count the champ. You got to count a champ out. So the rule was a little bit. Well, was it safe or was it not safe? But people aren't having no problem with that. You know, I, I am for one saying so you got to count to 10. But here I am saying, get Kevin Johnson out. See, it's a touchy situation. How can that be okay for this, but not okay for that? And that's how the argument is going to be like, Kevin Johnson, should he still be? Because I say it's gonna, it's it's scary. It's just scary. I don't want to go off the topic from the, the prospects, but I just did right here on the Ready Ready Talk Boxing Show with Mr. A. Maybe you have a feeling towards that topic. Put it in the comments. How do you feel about that topic? You know, should there be a, some type of committee like, oh shit, you know, we're starting to get these brain things. Like I said, NFL did the concussion buck, the concussion tests and. Test on the side of the field, basketball, the hand checking, and you know so much. What, what, what are flagrant fouls? They really cut down on boxing. You, you you can't take away this physicality, but age. You know if you want, like I said, new equipment for football for the protection of the hit. How can you protect the body that has no protection equipment? Say hey, do you get old? And you we're not gonna let you take this fucking hit. Is it, but is it age discrimination down in Boston? I'm going to sue your ass. Sue your fucking ass. Age discrimination. So it's touchy. It's touchy, you know. Wasn't there... I guess, if anything, it's up to... It's up to the commissioning board. Because I could have sworn someone turned down Holyfield for a fight. And, like, like, no, we're not, we're not going to license your old ass to fight, bro. You know? So they can do it. It's all on the commission. But I just wish some commission to stop giving Kevin Johnson the green light. So one day he's going to get cracked. But anyway, back to the prospects. Thank you for hearing that. The Double RT Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A. Hit that thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. Prospect next to number two. Danny Dubois who fought Kevin Johnson, the survivalist. Couldn't take him out. Filip Hovich, going to be a dangerous beast. Can't take him out. Especially if you get some trapping against the ropes, I think Filip Hovich is going to drop the ones, twos, and the body shots. I think he'll finish the job. I'd be surprised if Filip Hovich goes ten rounds, or it's probably ten rounds, and does not finish um, Kevin Johnson. Now, unless Kevin Johnson can move around the ring, we're going to find out. Like, damn, Filip really has some bad feet if Kevin Johnson is moving around the ring on him. That we're, we're going to find out something. You know, now Danny Dubois taking on Razvan Kanju, Kanju or whatever the dude, that dude doesn't fight. Like, I, how is this? What is one? I guess Danny Dubois failed the first test. Like, hey, you couldn't, you couldn't fucking finish a survivalist. You know, this dude just comes in here to look pretty, dance, you know, do a little shoulders, should do a little shake of the heads. You ain't hurting me. Couldn't finish that dude. Okay, you, you're going to get a second attempt at cracking that safe. Can you finish a known survivalist? Ray, Rajan Kanju, whatever, I think it's Kanju, Rajan Vervanjo, look his name up. It's, I, I just, I'm not even going to look his name up, Ray Rajavan, whatever, but I, Mr. R, you know. How can... Daniel Dubois possibly learn unless unless that's it. It's Daniel Dubois ain't got that ain't got that fucking the girt. He ain't got the girt. He ain't got the grit. He has the grit. He ain't got the grit, not the girt. He ain't got the grit. He ain't got that dog in him. He's power, but he's 
you know, yeah, I don't see it. Like, yeah, he's maybe he's vicious, but ain't showing no vicious in the ring. He ain't no risk taker. Because if he was, if he was that vicious, he would have took Kevin Johnson out. And this is his second go around. Because Rajan, I look, I look at the dude's name. I look him up because he's gonna throw. He throws uh, slappy punches here and there to to, to uh, make the show. He's he's gonna he's gonna put punches out there to make you look like shit. Razvan Kanjo Kanjo Kanjanu. I was close, not on the Kanjanu, but Razvan. He's gonna throw a few punches out there to make Danny Dubois look like shit, to make the show drag, to show you like, oh look, you guys think this guy is good? He's gonna throw a stupid little act on, wave his hands like, Ugh. talk his shit. Danny Dubois he could knock him out with body shots if he puts in the work. Like I said, crack number two out of fucking gimme. Can Danny Dubois take out? A survival. Like, hey, this guy's just he's in here to fucking survive. Can you take away his first aid kit? Can you? You know, he could you didn't do it against Kevin Johnson. And you didn't do it and well you should do it against fucking Razvan. You know, Lewis Ortiz just knocked him out. And you saw, but like I said, that's what's gonna be tough cause you saw even though Luis Ortiz finished him. Up until that one two, it, it's only second round, of course. It wasn't much time in the fight, but that one two. Before all that, Luis Ortiz was having a hard time making a fight with Razvan. He wasn't throwing nothing, so Luis had to go out there and really, really make that knockout. Is Danny Dubois going to go out there and make that knockout, or is he just going to like, oh shit, I got to reach and I land a one two? But he's going to. He has to crack that safe. He has to do it. He has to be a killer instinct. He has to show show a beast, you know? Come on. Get this motherfucker the fuck out. Philip Hovovich got to get Kevin Johnson the fuck out, you know? it's These heavyweight survivalists got to be taken out unless they're going to stay around. Uh, Nathan Gorman, he, to me, like I said, he has the toughest task as in a guy who's going to fight back. This guy's going to get gassed around. Mid, mid midway to the fourth, I believe. And the team member Alex Leopai, I say about fourth round he should be gassed out, but he's I think is going to have more of the heart to fight back. I think those other two are going to go into. Like I said, Razvan I think is going to fight, but not to, he's not going to fight to win. He's just going to fight to get to the twelfth round bell. Uh, Razvan's not going to fight to win. Kevin Johnson, I don't think he's going to... From what he showed us, he say, they say he got a knockout his last fight on boxing scene. So, we'll see. He got a knockout his last fight, so maybe he will come back to fight. But I think he's going to dance around the ring and try and survive. Razvan's going to put on a show just to end the 12th round bell. Alex Leopold, I think, might come to fight. I think he's going to come to fight and give the, best, the three prospects the best fight. And I think Nathan Gorman, all three of these heavy prospects, they should knock these guys out. I believe Nathan Gorman has the toughest task of that. Like I said, being the Alex Leopold is going to be the one actually fighting, throwing punches back. You know, I think he might be a tougher. Even though the other two I think are going to be survivalists. Alex Leopold, I think for the fight him fighting, Nathan Gorman's gonna have to try harder to knock this guy out. If that makes sense. And more of a tough knockout, because you know, not only do you have to apply offense, you got you gotta apply defense. Those other two are just gonna have, I think apply offense and can they do the job? That's what it is. Because those other uh Kevin Johnson and the is gonna be all defense on hokey pokey show offense. It's gonna be some bullshit. That's what I'm thinking. So those are the three prospects right there. You know, what do you guys think of those? What is your topic on those three prospects? What do you think of that fight? So, so far, we're 20 minutes into the show. You know, you do the two topics. You could leave those comments down. Comment number one, topic number one. You know, what do you think about 
the older, you know, 39 year olds, 40 year olds fighting, you know, no more Floyd, no more Pacquiao. See what I mean? It's, it's tossy, it's tossy, it's tossy, you know? And then, uh, question number two, comment number two, topic number two, right here on the double RT boxing show. The three heavyweights, three prospect heavyweights, Philip Hibovich, Daniel Dubois, Nathan Gorman taking on their, their survivalists, theirs, you say, all this month. Gorman taking on, uh, Alex Leopold, Daniel Dubois taking on, uh, Razvan, and Philip taking on Kevin Johnson. What do you think of those fights? Leave a comment down for those two questions. Moving on to the pay-per-view buys. Obviously, we're bringing that up because this this whole Wilder Fury thing, you know, blah, 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 the draw, draw, draw. But now we're actually talking about the draw of the money, the pay-per-view drive. You know, now reported for first it was going around uh, 275, 300 for the last couple of days. Now it's came out today that it's close to about 325 thousand of course you know is it successful is it a piece of shit is it so is it par you know <clears throat> me and myself i thought it was going to be about 250 275 to be honest that's what i thought you know just 325 to me i find that to be successful i find it to be highly successful surprisingly successful i'm glad it did that that it's even though it's like it's us who like I don't want to pay for the fucking thing, but damn, I gotta catch that guy. <clears throat> it's like I got paid for. I don't like paying for, it, but I guess certain, certain. I guess if you if you love something enough, you 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 buy. You know, you, you like you like big gulps. You like you like king size fries. You buy bigger fries. You know, if you like your French fries, you get the big size. You like boxing. I guess you pay for a fight here and there. I guess it's like your way of. Buying that fucking, you know, you buy movie tickets, you know, I don't know, no, and you can always watch the f movie on fucking YouTube or a pirate site, but hey, you buy a boxing fight, it's the way it is, you know, but anyway, I found that I paid for it, I got it, I was part of it, I got it on the PS4, I don't know if the PS4 cells are in it, you know, but 325 how do you hold it successful? You know, obviously the high the high baller is Canelo. Canelo Triple G's one and two was one point three, one point one. So I guess that's our bar now. You know, that's where we originally that's where we're at. That's the high that's the high standards. You know, okay, that's that's gonna be hard to reach. You know, no one's on Canelo's status. Canelo's been around for a while. He kinda had a chance to build up on pay per view. You know, okay, Kier, you can kind of take go into that, put that into factor. What what was kind of high before that one? I I, I found um, Pacquiao Bradley. You know, Pacquiao Bradley two did seven fifty to eight hundred. So part three did anywhere to four to five with a rumors to high threes. So. That's the last pay-per-view star, Pacquiao. You know that was his. Last. And then after that fight, after Pacquiao did Bradley, you know for the five hundreds, he went on did um Jesse Vargas on pay-per-view, and that's when he didn't have he just, That's when HBO and Top Rank really started their little feet, like shit going on. Like are we going to continue? Are we not going to continue? That pay per view was all Bob Arum. It did around 300 or high twos, you know. So 325 for Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. 325. That's being out there. 320, 325. Pacquiao Vargas. What's out there is 300. About. Not above, not 305, not 310. Wilder Fury, 325. You could say, hey, you know, it should have been should have done more. That's Wilder and Fury. First pay-per-view. No guy is really known in the States. You know, Pacquiao and Vargas. You know, you could say Pacquiao was on his decline big time, but it was still Pacquiao. And he was trying to show he did 300. That's more than a, a decline in Pacquiao. You know, it's that's 
It's that type of star power, guys. We still consider Pacquiao to have star power, do we not? Uh, we still say Pacquiao's a star. You know, in, in the sport of boxing, Pacquiao's a star. 300, 325. That's a successful. And then if you want to take away Pacquiao and, and this generation, the last few years of pay-per-view, say no Canelo, no Pacquiao, obviously no Floyd. Triple G versus Lemieux. You can say uh, what, whatever, who's known, who's not known. This motherfucker broke. That was a run and a half. Yikes. That was yikes. Tennessee Titan football versus Jackson Jacksonville. If you've seen, if you've seen the game, you know what run I'm talking about. Right here on the Double RT Boxing Show. 13-2. Ten Titans and Jaguars. So, Triple G, David Lemieux, 150 pay-per-view buys. And that might have been considered kind of successful considering the money on that pay-per-view they weren't known i don't know if it was a flop or not but i just got the numbers then you got uh andre ward and kovalev andre ward and kovalev won did 165 america's gold medalist kovalev the crusher you know number two did 100 and 25 to 130. Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury, 325. Andre Ward, Kovalev, 165, 130, and two. So they didn't even combine that in a. Uh, what's that? Two, two, did, they, did they combine that? 165? No, they didn't even combine it. They didn't even combine Tyson Fury and Wilder, Wilder Fury, in two fights. They couldn't combine what Tyson Fury and them did in one fight. So, how do you take that? Andre Ward, Sergey Kovalev in two fights did less pay-per-views than Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. And compare it even more. You know, you, like I said, whatever reasons you want to say, they say we're just doing numbers. Fifty to sixty thousand. What? Triple G did 150,000. Pacquiao and Vargas did 300,000. The next fight we're talking about is 50 to 60. They even get in the hundreds. 50 to 60. Yes, that's what that's 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 like the Dallas Cowboy Stadium. You know, on a bad day, on a bad day, man. And that's a good ass college football game day. We're talking about the fight of Terrence Crawford and Pistol and um, Victor Postal. I can say who the fuck is Victor Postal, and well, obviously who the fuck is Terrence Crawford. You know, yeah, he was the selling, the selling shit of that fight. But I'm, who the fuck was you know fifty to sixty thousand? It is what it is. You know, so compared to. 50, 60,000 for Terrence Crawford first pay per view. His opponent, Victor Postal, you can always say hey, it was Tyson Fury. Hey, they all got opponents, man. They all got opponents. And like I said, it takes two. It takes two. Tyson Fury is not American. Victor Postal is not American. Crawford and Deontay Wilder are. So it is what it is. Triple G, David Lemieux, they're not American. That's still so. You know, Triple G was known in America. It's a, it is what it is. Andre Ward, Sergey Kovalev, two pay-per-view fights did less than Deontay Wilder and Fury. 325, like I said, and I don't know if that's, they just said pay-per-view buys, and they haven't quite mentioned and listed all the things. Like I said, I don't know if the, that's only from cable subscriptions and stuff. I don't know if that's even, including my PS4s and, you know, it should. I'd be. It'd be kind of weird if it's not. But you never know. You never know. You know. Look, look at. Look at fucking like pre, pre, presidential elections. They be fucking counting all those shits in Florida, man. Over and over and over and over and shit. So who knows if the PS4 is mine? And I, I know a thousand people bought it on the PS4. So one of that in, includes it in the sales. 
And there's like fuck what four million fucking. Well, I know there's not like four million PS4s in the United States, but I'm pretty sure there's a shitload of PS4s in the United States. You know, so that is the pay per view buys, and that's a pretty good. Like I said, going over it all again, three twenty five. You got fifty sixty for Crawford, his first one. You got one fifty for Triple G. Pacquiao Vargas was three hundred. War Kovalev combined both fights did less than this one did. It's it's three twenty five is very very nice, very nice. And then we move on to this weekend, December 8th, 2018. Like I said, the fight of the year, or not year, uh, uh, the fight, well, I'm, I'm thinking about the fight of the year, man. It's good question. I want like, who do you guys have? Who do you have? Uh, oh, before we move on, topic and question and comment number three for the WRB Waxing episode number Fourteen. You can leave that answer. Com- three, three, three little topics if you care to leave your answers. What do you think about the age of people? You know, save their brain, save their lives in the boxing ring. Comments on the three prospects and their fights to heavyweights. And then comment number three. Comparing, hearing those pay per view numbers. What is your opinion on that? Is it highly successful? You know, you you, you heard the numbers. You heard them right here on the Double RT Box, and we will talk <clears throat> about December 8th. I'm just pulling up all the schedules here, man. I, I, I fucked up with uh, looking up all those names and shit because I was pissed off. All right. December 8th, the the main fight is Vasily Lomachenko, but we're not going to talk about that card first. Or shall we? Shall we? Let's talk about Vassal Lomachenko. Where is that? If that is probably the best card. So fuck it. We'll talk about the best first anyway. You know, Vassal Lomachenko headliner with Jose Pedraza. This is not only the best fight on the 8th, it is the best card. Now, on the card itself, I don't know the Brian Cabello. Daniel Calzada. I don't know that fight. Now, obviously, some uh, Daniel O'Brien is a guy. Bobby's over here trying to uh, build up, promote, help. Now, the opener to Fimo Lopez, ten and zero, taking on Mason Minard. Now, this this should be to feel. I think he's coming back from a slight injury. He he's gonna. He needs to just bash. Uh, he's gonna bash Man- Mason out. Mason couldn't handle the speed movement of Devin Haney, and Devin Haney eventually was able to stop Mason. Tofimo Lopez, who I believe is a, a pow- more power hitter than Devin Haney. He has the speed and it's the quickness with the hands. He should be able to. What what is do they show a height on these guys? Five eight, five six. So you got two inches on him and a half inch and a half reach. He should be able to fit. I'm expecting quick violence pressure from Tofimo. Uh, uh, you know, he needs to make a statement against what. Devin Haney did, you know, and then in the co-main event, Isaac Dogbo <clears throat> taking on Emmanuel Navarretti. Navarretti. Isaac Dogbo is one of my nominees for 2018 Fight of the Year. Put that in the little memory bank. So we talk about 20 Fight of the Year, 2018 Fight of the Year. You know, obviously, you know, you got some of the big names out there. But Isaac Dog Bay is one of Mr. A's final four. I got four, folks. There's four. One, two, three, four final eliminations that we will get to in another time. <laughs> four. Isaac Dog Bay taking on Emmanuel Navarrete. Number one contender, I believe. I believe it's number one contender. You know, or he's pretty high up there because Isaac Dog Bay, give that motherfucker credit. That dude be fighting the best. 
You know, he fights nothing but the best, and he wants the best. Took a, you know, he, as a fan, I had to see a little something. You know, I had to have one answer from him. He answered what I needed to see. I think Dalbo's the man, dude. It's pretty damn good. I still think a jab troubles him, but he's good. He's fighting number two. And Diego De La Hoya, who is number one, who knows what the fuck's happened to him. Remember, he fainted in camp. He, he's been having a hard time that fight and the fight before that. Remember, he couldn't make weight. He got fined for being overweight. And then the next fight, he fuckers faints in camp. So who knows what's wrong with number one. So Isaac Dogbay is fighting number two. And uh, I'm expecting Isaac Dogbay to, to win that one. To win that. Uh, too fast. Too fast. And uh, I think the body work. Body work. Then you move on to the headliner. The headliner. Vasil Lomachenko, Jose Pedraza. This... This is what Jose Pedraza was signed for, to, to fill this void. This void right here. Because Vasil Lomachenko, <laughs> Lomachenko, he fought Guillermo Rigondeaux. If you really think about it, he, he fought Nicholas Walters. That was a hot name right there. He, he, he was pretty damn hot. He went Roman Martinez, Nicholas Walters, two hot fights. And then Jason Sosa was like, oh, okay, he may he beat um, Fontuna. Okay, Jason Sosa, okay. But then he went Mariaga. Now, yeah, remember, Salito fucked that fight up. It was supposed to be Salito, the rematch, but shit went wrong. It was Mariaga. Okay, we guess. You know, he started getting hell for being a fighting a smaller dude. And then the world demanded he fight fucking Rigo. That didn't go quite the way the world wanted it. You know? So they they after the fight was fucking really pumped up and blah blah blah, the world realized like, oh shit, that dude's a lot bigger than him. Boom, that fight went that way. And then he goes and gets fights Jorge Linares. You know, it, it he had no... That's like the only fight he really had out there. Is it Linares or Garcia? Top rank really didn't have nothing for um, Lomachenko themselves. They needed other people to help Lomachenko's career out. And that's where Jose Pedraza came in. He was a spare tire. Fucking... This spot, December 8th, was going to, they needed a fight. But what really turned, what really made matters worse was, um, fucking what made matters worse is the WBO ordered Beltran's fight. He had to fight a mandatory. After the Paul, after the Paulus Moses, he had to fight someone. Like, oh shit, remember, they were they were gonna arrest Beltran and let him fight fucking Lomachenko. But the WO put that dude in, but he got hurt. Something like he, he pulled out of the fight with like a I don't know if it was a skin thing or he got hurt. And then Pedraza steps in. They signed Pedraza. They happen to sign Pedraza and he gets this title shot quickly with Raymond Beltran. He he beat Antonio Maroon for a WBO. Who's Antonio is now fighting for the I think it's some type of Latino belt. Come I think today or tomorrow. They signed Pedraza as okay shit. Raymond needs a um a fight. He has to fight someone. We just uh, Jose Pedraza got a quick little belt in the WBO. He became a mandatory. It's now in house fight, and Lomachenko has a backup fight for two belts. They somehow wanted Lomachenko to beat Beltran for that other belt, but shit popped off and they needed, there was a chance that Beltran was going to lose a fight and they were going to lose their hand, their hold of the belt. So they, they went out and signed Pedraza to somehow fight Lomachenko. Whether he beat um, Beltran or not, 
ultimately that was his goal. His his that was that was his signing purpose to keep the belt in house to fight somehow get that belt to Lomachenko. So that's it came down to this moment. Uh, is Lomachenko should have any problems with Pedraza? I don't I don't think so. You know Pedraza he's a quick guy. He's fast, but he's, he gets hit easy because he stay, he stay, he moves, but he stays right in front of you. He he do all this movement, throw a punt, and he stays for as much as he moves, he stays right in front of you for a long period of time. And where's he at? Five eight to five seven. Seventy one. Now this I did not know. This would be interesting to see if he can use this, folks. 71 inch reach to 65 and a half. He has four inches on fucking Lomachenko. Now, what that means, we're about to see some serious fucking footwork from Lomachenko. If, if, and he's a Southpaw Orthodox, a Southpaw Orthodox battle. Like I said, fucking Pedraza stands in front too long. So we're going to see, can. Pedraza keep that distance and work a jab. Can will we see Lomachenko struggling? It's pretty interesting. Like I said, that that little concept right there changed the aspect for me. But I still suspect Lomachenko should do it. But it's different. The four and inch reaches do. You never know what they say jab is the best punch in the business. It can control a fight. It's gotta be able to control the best, right? A jab gotta be able to control the best. Lomachenko ain't that damn good where he can't get away from a jab. He has a footwork, but we'll see. Ooh, 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 ooh. Fucking Jose Pedraza, right? Moving on to the eighth. The, the double header of ladies on HBO. So we talked about top rank. You know, you can leave a comment down below. What do you think of that card? Question number four, comment number four, topic number four. Repeat the, the questions. We're going to repeat the questions. What do you think of age in the ring, the three heavyweight prospects, the pay-per-view buys, and question number four, what do you think of top ranks pay-per-view? What do you think of the fights? You know, what, what, What's your fight on that card you're looking forward to? Now we move on to KT, K2 promotions, Triple G promotions. 360, whatever the hell, you know, it's a it's a three man three, it's a three team deal right here because you know K2 is Kathy Cassie Duva. You got Juan Francisco Estrada taking on Victor Mendez. I don't know Victor Mendez. If if Juan Fr Francisco Estrada is who the fuck he's claiming to be, you know he get he had that fight with Ranga Visa. You know he's looking for that rematch. If he's the guy who fucking barks so loud and says he's going to do something in that rematch. He didn't look too hot in his Felipe fight. You know, he looked, his Carlos fight was nice. His Ranga Vise fight was nice. His last fight was, I don't know. So I don't know who this Victor Mendez is, 28-3. and three. But if Juan is who he claimed to be, he should get him out there, right? Clarissa Shields, Famika... Femiki Hermans. I say it right now, folks. Clarissa Shields is number two fighter of the year. We got Isaac Dogbe. Clarissa Shields. You know? We will get into why. But those are two of my fighters. I got four. It's down to four. Isaac Dogbe. Clarissa Shields. There are two. There are two of them right there for you, folks. Right there. Now, Clarissa Shields taking on Hermans. The IBF. The WBA. The WBC. Middleweight champion. Clarissa Shields taking on Hermans. Hermans comes in wild. Swinging a little reckless. Should... This should be a good fight for Clarissa Shields to practice what John Davis is trying to install in her. Because Herman is going to come pretty forward with some wild shit. 
Now, Clarissa Shields can engage and get back into that wild shit that she does. But if John Davis is trying to stall in her, be calm, fight behind a strong jab, Herman's is going to throw some wild, strong offense, but be right in front of you for that style to be in practice on. So Shields should win that. Now, how hard she makes it on herself, that's what we're going to be interested to see. Cecilia Brock, who's taking on Alexandra Lobes. Cecilia Brock has got the fucking crown. You know, interesting to see what she does on this one. Because me, myself, I think age is catching up to her. It just sucks that, you know, it's right now, during, during the tail end of her career, women boxing is really hitting its peak. Or a stride peak. Or I guess it is in its peak. If you want to measure it right now, it's at its highest. You know? She's, she's uh, ever since I started the show a year and a half ago and I discovered uh, Cecilia Bracus. First thing I noticed doing research on her, as good as she is, you can go back and watch all the tapes. Double RT Boxing Show, Mr. H, type in. Brock Hoos, I did like four of her fights. And I always been saying that as much as I love and just I love her her skills, I always said she can be hit by a right hand because she jumps in. She jumps in a lot. You know, it's like that Manny Pacquiao. You can you can time their their greatness. You can time it. And that's why I don't feel everyone saying Cecilia Brockhus needs to go up to 154 to fight Shields. And I hope this is not what this is kind of a setup for, the setup for that fight. Because as much as Cecilia can box, I believe, box uh, Clarissa Shields' ears off, I think she can with the movement and the skills she possesses. In that fight, Clarissa Shield is going to be like Deontay Wilder. That power is going to be able to flip that switch off at any moment in that round. And if Clarissa Shields is working with John Davis Jackson, who's trying to teach her to work behind a jab, a strong jab, she is going to catch Brock, who's jumping in with a right hand, much like Callie Reese did, who is a bigger fighter. A 154 who came down. People were forgetting, like, oh, HBO was all shit, and everyone's shitting on it. Like, oh, you know, if ESPN, if if uh, we're talking about best female fighters, I don't know. Uh, Katie Taylor is looking real hot to me. You know, these performances by Brock, who's ain't looking good. Like, dude, she she was fighting a fucking 154 who came down, bro. Calm the fuck down. You know, Katie Taylor ain't fighting no one bigger than her. And then, so if she's 37 years old, Bracus, going up in weight, that her first time fighting at this heavy against a 160, 168 Clarissa Shields coming down. Cecilia so Bracus ain't the power puncher already. Going up to 154 to fight Clarissa Shields, Clarissa Shields will fuck her up. It's and it won't be pretty. It'll be a it, it'll be a, a knockout. It'll be bad because Brackus is easily as much as she as good as she is, and I love watching her. Her she, that's like some sweet good science to watch. She has all the punch, the uppercut, it just that weight and the power. It's it's, it's gonna be like fucking It's gonna be like fucking. It's gonna be like fucking Jason Wellborn and Jared Hurd. <laughs> you know, Wellborn was doing his thing, but the power wasn't there, and when uh, and when. Well, and when her wanted to turn it on, bye Now, I don't know if Clarissa Shields going to be like, hey, let me turn it on. But that power is going to be like, bye you you know? So I'm going with um, Brockus on that one. But I just don't hope that's the fucking setup they're trying to go for on that one. Because that's a fight I don't want to see. <laughs> Not at all. I, let, 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 one, it's just that, that size to me. You know, it's like, hey, you want to see Earl Spence and Mikey Garcia? I'm more intrigued in that one because then Clarissa Shields and Barackos, that's that's a big ass. That's 168. Yeah, it'll be 154, but remember where Clarissa Shields started from. 168 fighting a 147. Come on now. Come on now. 
So that's that car. What do you think of that? Question number five, HBO uh, broadcast, K2, Triple G, 360 event. You got Brock who's taking on Lo- Lopes. You got Shields taking on Hermans. You got Francisco Estrada taking on uh, Mendez. I, like I said, I don't know that fight much. But what do you think about that? What do you think about Clarissa Shields and Brock who's fighting? You heard what I had to say about it. I think it's bad. I think it's a bad ends in a bad knockout. You know, can Brock who's boxer airs off? Yes, but it just where it came from, 168 to 147. Just too much, too much. Now, what do you think about that? That's question number five. You know, do the four dunk. We're gonna do the four questions again. Question number one: What do you think about the age in the ring? Oh, Don Stevenson. You got Kevin Johnson fighting at 39 against a hard hitter, Filip Hovich on the eighth. Oh, that could be dangerous. Question number two: You got the three heavyweight prospects, Hovich, Danny Dubois, Nathan Gorman fighting survivalists, fighting fucking Kevin Johnson. Razvan and Alex Leopold. What do you think of those fights? Who should win? Who who should get a knockout? Who has the hardest time getting a knockout in those fights? Question number three, pay-per-view buys. I did the rundown, 325. Was, what do you think of it? Crawford only did 50 to 60. Holtz, Ward, and Co- uh, Ward and Kovalev combined did less than 325. So what do you think about that? Question number four, what do you think about the top ring car? What's your favorite fight? I'm looking forward to Lomachenko, what he can do. I'm looking forward to Isaac Dog Basie and what he can do. Now, question number five, what do you think of the HBO card? Clarissa Shields. So there's, so there's Brock who's talk about rumor. Not a rumor, just people are trying to talk into existence. What do you think of that fight? And then the last December 8th card we will be talking about is Kel Brook taking on Michael Zarafa. I see him fight a few times. Just, just didn't know who the fuck he was. Then going to research him, I was like, okay, I know who he is. Now this card has Kel Brook on it, Michael Zaf- Zafra, jo- Jonah Corral, Guli Mean, Francois. Always messing up. I did the breakdown of prediction on that fight, so go check that out. I'm heavy. I'm highly in- interested in this fight. Winner fights. Uh, Tevin Farmer. So, um, if you want a more breakdown into that fight, go watch that breakdown prediction. Josh Kelly versus David Anavesian. Big step up. Big step up. Or is it? Or is it? But Josh Kelly, 8 0, taking on 23 and 3 and 1. Is this fight a step up? On paper, it says so. But interesting in that. Anthony Fowler. He has a, t- a TBA. And Kid Gallahan, he's taking a stay busy fight from his um, IBF eliminator. So he just he just won that. He's taking a stay busy fight. So that way he could be on the same uh, path as the winner. Because we all know the IBF champion, Josh Warrington, he's fighting Carl Frampton on the 22nd. So if Kid Gallahan fights a nice little ticker in between her, a stay ready, stay busy fights, stay warmed up fight. You know, he's like, okay, boom, you for the 22nd, you had your two weeks off, you had your two weeks off, go back to the gym or whatever. You had your three months off. Let's fucking fight. We're on the same, he, he's on the same path as the champion. So the champion has no excuse whether they're not ready. He's a fucking, we both had the same amount of time. You don't need no more rest. I don't need no more rest. Let's get it on. So I like what kid Gallahan is doing on that. He's staying on the, He's staying ready with the same pace with the champions. Now, that being the card, you know, we're going to see. Like I said, Kid Gallahan should win that. It's a nice eight round step up fight against 10 and 4 Byron Marina. Anthony Frowler, who should win? He's, it's already, he was two days away. He doesn't have an opponent. So I don't think he's going to give a lot. I don't think he's going to get a live dog in there. He's going to get a dog in there. And you got Jonah, you got Josh Kelly and Jonah Corral. Impossible. Their biggest matches to their date. Josh Kelly, who's a what, WBA, what is he, WBA international champion? What was that belt he has? International. He's the international champion. Jo- Josh Kelly. That means that motherfucker could go anywhere within the UK. 
Alright, yeah, and just fuck and just fight. You're going the whole nation. Going the whole nation cross cross some bodies of waters if you had to. Go to the whole nation. Taking on David and an event. What exactly is David, you know? Where he made his fame fighting Mosley. And eh, so it's like, is it a step up? Or is it? Is it? You know what I mean? But now, don't get me wrong. This fight is probably a bigger, does bigger. It's a win is more important for David. You know, Josh Kelly loses. Okay, he's not quite. You know, he learned. He learned. David Anavesian, Anavesian, he can't learn. This is a loss for him. Because 8 0, ranked number 11 in the WBA. You know, Josh Kelly wins this fight. Josh Kelly can't take really much baby steps, you know. Can't go for sh backward step. David, David is way above British level. At least the namesake is. He's, you know, he's, he's high above domestic British level shit. After this fight, it's going to be tough for Josh Kelly to get matched opponents unless it's just really big name, top domestic fights. And I said, I will look into more to see what other British waterweights are out there, maybe Irish waterweights, something that's going to be behind him because he's going to have to start fighting some. Well, let's look at the waterweights. Let's do that, folks, right here on the Double RT Boxing Show. We're going to see what the fuck Josh Kelly's about to get himself into. Because the eighth could really be a fucking career-changing day for Josh Kelly. You know, Josh Kelly, I'm a, I'm a fan of him. I am a fan of Josh Kelly, but what the fuck is he about to get himself into? At eight and no, he's number 11 by the WBA as their international champion and that all that is all folks he ain't nowhere else to be seen David Anavesian who is nowhere to be seen at all so that's why he's fighting for a nice international belt to get David's trying to get back into the rankings now after okay maybe this is what he will do Josh, I, I would just say he needs to fight a big name, domestic level walk to it, something if he because he can't take too many steps backwards. To me, and here it is: Connor Ben, number number ten, Josh Kelly, number eleven. Is it too soon? Is it too soon for Connor Ben Josh Kelly fight? You know, Eddie Hearn did put fucking Chamberlain and um, Okole together. He did do that. He figured now, but in front of Conor Ben, is Conor Ben with? I believe he is with Eddie, isn't he? I could be wrong. I could be wrong. In front of him, you got Fabian and Andres Maidana. He could fight him. Get him, get his ass on the zone. Kermin Larahaga, he's not gonna fight him. Jose Cita Lopez, maybe as a Keith Thurman, he he be taking some fights. Adrian Broner, Pacquiao, American, no. Egis, top rank. Egis, Jamal James, Jesse Vargas, Jesse Vargas, Jesse Vargas, and a Josh Kelly. But ooh, would Jesse Vargas do that to him? So remember, Jesse Vargas turned down, he turned down to fight Quatrillo. You know, he he didn't want no, he didn't want no smoke with Quatrillo. Abu Kakarov, you know, my dark horse boy, the Punisher. So why would Jesse Vargas want some smoke with Josh Kelly? That's that's not good career moves. You know, he's a, that's just like fucking, that's just like fucking taking bad moves, man. They don't want that smoke with young, uh, a young no, no, no one wanted to fight fucking Errol Spence. No one wants to fight these young people now. Now that these are other people, Josh Kelly's like, oh shit, he might be too, I might lose to him and get no money, get no nothing. Jonah Corral taking on Gouli Me and Frenzois. Jono needs to win that fight to get the that, that, um, Tevin Farmer. So I'm expecting a good performance. Kell Brook versus Michael Zafara. Kell Brook 
is if Amir Khan's going for that Crawford fight, Carl Brook just shot himself in. He didn't really shoot himself in the foot or nothing, but taking this fight was a stay busy fight. But he obviously thought he had taken this fight, whipped this dude's ass, and going to fight Amir Khan. That's obviously what he's thought. But now, with Amir Khan taking on the Crawford fight, which he should and I would if I were him, Amer Kel Brooks got to put on a performance here and they have to sell his ass. Well, I should want to say not sell his ass. That sounds sounds prostitutish. S sell himself with it, speaking. All he's gonna have to call out. I will call out if I was him. I call out fucking uh, a nice money fight. I call out Jeff Horn. If I was Kelbrook, I'd be trying to fucking talk as mad shit as I can on Jeff Horn. Bring him down to 154. You know? Fight me in England or I'll fight you in Australia. Somewhere those two dudes can make a lot of money. Kelbrook and Jeff Horn. Uh, Kelbrook, does he want Charlo Smoke? You know? Kelbrook has. There's a lot he can fight in the top at one. But he wants to fight at 147. Is, he, is this where this fight's at? Is he fighting Michael Zafara at 147? I believe he said that's what he wants to be at. Right? I don't know if what is Michael, what is Michael Zafra? What is he listed as? Super Walter. So is this fight still at 154? That's a good question. I'm not too sure, but we're gonna say it is because that's what they both listed as. Now 154. It's a lot of fucking fights for this dude to have. I'm telling you, you know, because right here on the Double RT Boxing Show, with your host Mr. A, we 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 don't we just don't know. Charlos, we just don't know Herd, we just don't know the champion who else, Hany Mungia. We know some other people, you know. We know who the fuck Dennis Hogan, but Dennis Hogan, he's tied up at fucking Hany Mungia. Who well, he has a fight coming up, Dennis Hogan. Julian Williams, he just fought Kel Kel Brook. Like I said, the, the advantage Kel Brook has, he's on the zone. He has an English fan base. So we have some. He has a little bit of fan base in the states because the states know he, he's a fight. The dude, the states know he's he's legit. You know, he can fight Julian Williams at the end. But Julian Williams is he's protecting his number one spot against Jamel um, Charlo. Kel Brook could fight Sergio Garcia, the Spaniard. He could fight Erickson Lubin could try and make a name for himself against fucking Kel Brook. You got Shalucky. That'd be that, that's that's a nice out of nowhere fight, you know. Shalucky worked with Eddie Hearn with Jacobs. You got that's the that's just WBCs. Like I said, you got Tony Harris. And you can fight him, but it's not gonna look good for Kel Brook to fight uh, Charlo. The leftovers. Jared Hurd for the WBA. He ain't trying to fight fucking Jared Hurd. They wanted that fight, but that he. He might just slide in there because I think Hurd and Kell Brook, that's more money for Hurd than fighting Charlo. Can you imagine if Jared Hurd hometown fight was Kell Brook? That would be fucking amazing. That would be badass. But you got Michael Sorrow who's fighting, I think, at the 6th or the 8th. Number one, he's fighting. So he's out there. Kell Brook will try and fight him for his spot coming up soon. Brian Carlos Castino, the regular champion. Last I heard, he's fighting Lara. That's in the works. And there he is, Michael Zafara, number yeah, super super welterweight, number eight. So Kell Brook, number two, was fighting number eight. You got Carlos Adamis. Yeah, so he was fighting backwards. There's only Michael Saro and Brian Castino ahead of him. And Lara's number three. Now, if that fight somehow breaks up, I'd love to see a Kell Brook and a Lara fight. A Kell Brook and Castino. Kell Brook and Carlos Adams. That'd be okay. Now, Kell Brook is not in the IBF. Oh, he is. Number five. Kell Brook. Kell Brook is sneaking his ass up in the rankings, folks. He got Muhammad Kurt Karbanov. I think I seen. I think I seen that guy. Dennis Hugan. So the IBF, we know no, their, their spots ain't rated. The, I mean, the number ones and twos are empty. Julian Williams won that eliminator, so he's in this. So, so Kell Brook might fight somebody and get an IBF eliminator number two spot. Will he fight Julian Williams to fight Jared Hurd? Maybe. And then you have Kell Brook at number four. Number four. 
can can get this folks get this shit Jaime Mungia who is number three fighter of the year nomination right here on the double RT boxing show you ask how is that so how is that so I'm sorry I got five it's five I got five I got five and you heard three of them so you got Jaime Munguia, who number one is Dennis Hugan. Number two, Julian Williams. Julian Williams is number one in IBF and number one in WBC. So he's already, I think, a mandatory for one. He's he's going to get a title shot. So I don't think he's going to get that WBO shot. Then you got Jaime Munguia, who's taking on Takeshi Inui. He's fighting a number three guy. The fight just got pushed back, I think, to the beginning in a beginning of February or late January. And then number four is Cal Brook, folks. Number four, Cal Brook. And number five is Aries Landy Lara. So Cal Brook could fight. He's going to have to fight Julian Williams, Hogan, Sorrow. Those are the only ones that's really always ranked above him. Now I said, if he's gonna take a step backwards to fight, he can fight people. He can fight a Lubin, a Lara, Carlos Adamis, a Brandon Cook. Remember, he, he was gonna to try to fight that dude, but I don't know if that's worth a fight anymore, considering what Jaime McGee just did to him. But like I said, me, the move I th- Kell Brooks should be doing is calling out Jeff Horn, because right now I think J- Kell Brook, he's been he's been so so animated about this Amir Khan fight. Like I said, I don't know where the beef started from. Someone in the UK, you can leave a comment down below. Like, hey, how did that fucking beef really start? But I think Kell Brook is, needs that fight. He wants that fight more than Amir Khan. Not for the fact that Amir Khan th- thinks Brook is going to knock him out. Amir Khan ain't stressing about the money. Kell Brook is stressing about the money. You know, he went up and fought Triple G. For that money. And fuck, I want, I want another money bag. He thought he was going to get that money bag, fight American and get that double money bag. He's like, ah, shit. He ran into here to fight Earl Spence. And he still didn't fight American. So he, he wants that American bag before he can fucking. He's like, dude, I got two fucking metal plates in my face. I got two fake fucking optical eyeballs here, you know? How long do I really want to fight American? Fight me so I can get this fucking money bag and walk away. You know, to me, the besides American money bag, the biggest money bag out there for Kell Brook. Think about it, folks. Is Jeff Horn? Jeff Horn, in Australia, any light, anywhere you see that fight, whether it's in England, whether it's in Australia, it might be more money in Australia because I don't know how fa- England. There's some part there behind. They're behind Kell Brook, but I don't know how high they're going to value um, value Jeff Horn as an opponent. Now, going to Australia, Australia is behind Jeff Horn, and I believe they're going to value, value give Kell Brook more value than what England would give Jeff Horn. I, like I said, I believe Australia, here's the scales, you know, a fucking England sees Jeff Jeff Horn. Australia sees Kell Brook. I think it's gonna go. Oh, they're gonna see Kell Brook as a higher opposition than what England sees Jeff Horn as. That's just my thoughts. This is the Double RT Boxing Show. I'm your host, Mr. A. Thank you for tuning in to episode number 14. The questions. Question topic number one. What do you think about the age in the the the, the game? You got Kevin Johnson, old man, fighting a dangerous puncher, and Felix Hovavich. Question number two. What do you think of these prospects' fights? Felix Hovavich taking on Kevin Johnson. Danny Dubois taking on fucking uh, Razvan. And you got fucking Nathan Gorman taking on uh, Alex Lapa. Not really banger punches, banger fights. What do you think of those prospect fights? Who has a harder time getting a knockout? 
Should these guys be easy, easy skeezy fights? Question number three, what do you think of the pay-per-view buys? 325, 50, 60,000 for Crawford. Remember that one. You got 150 for Triple G. Sergey Kovalev and Andre Ward both combined fights. did less than 325. Question number four, what do you think of the top rank fight? Lomachenko and Pedraza. I'm, I want to see Dog Bay. I want to see, I want to see how he continues to look. Question number five, what do you think about the HBO card, the K2 promotions, the Triple G 360 promotions? It's not the best of cards. Clarissa Shields should – I want to see how she looks with the nice jab, the, the production of her and um, Johnson together. But what do you think of the rumor or the, the, they're trying to talk it into existence? It's not a rumor. They're just trying to talk it into existence. Media. What do you think of the, the idea of the fight, Clarissa Shields and, and uh, Brock who's – Question number five is Dekel Brookhar. What do you think of it? What, do you th- what fight you want to see most? Jo- Jonu Corral. Corral. Do you think he will beat Seven Farmer? Just what do you think of that card? And as I said, the question is, what do you think of Kel Brook and J- um, Jeff Horn? That is question number five. Where do you think it will make the most money? England or Australia? Thanks for tuning in. I am your host. This is the Double RT Boxing Show, episode number 14. Thank you for your time and support. Like I said, new viewers, if you watch this uh, one hour and 12 minutes, let, or well, that's one minute, one hour, 11 minutes going on 12 minutes. If you watch this, dedicated your time and support. I appreciate it. Here's your thumbs up to anyone who watched it. Bring it on back. Support the show. Hit the thumbs up. New viewers, hope you became new subscribers. Subscribers who are already subscribed. Subscribers, thank you for your time. I shut it off. Zip it up. See you on the next one.